Welcome, Pinnacle Village. This is our Pinnacle Live Sunday series, and we are in the middle of brick by brick from vision to reality. It has been an incredible journey so far through the story of Nehemiah. Uh, I'd like to begin with um, just a quick story. I'd, I'd like to believe that during the past two years, during this pandemic, most especially during that first year where the majority of the world was on lockdown and we had no choice but to stay at home, many of us watched a lot of shows, movies, K-dramas, etc. right? Yes, there's laughter inside the Epic Hub because, yes, <laughs> that is a shared experience of perhaps the entire world. And if there's one thing that has happen to all of us, right? It's in that moment where you are watching an episode or you're watching a movie, and there's this portion because we now have the power of the remote control, right? You want to skip this part of the episode. You want to skip this part of the movie simply because you feel that it's not important to the plot line. How many of you folks can relate? Yes. I think because our generation is a generation of TikTok, right? They say that if you don't catch my attention in three seconds, scroll up, right? Yes? No, seriously, Paul. Like, I find myself doing that even as I'm going through my own social media feeds. That's why the first couple of sentences or the first couple of seconds of a video is so important because you want to be able to hook that person's attention, right? Yeah, and that's why, can you look at the person beside you, tell them we're just a few seconds in, we're just starting, okay, I hope you got your attention. <laughs> so, you know, this is probably a feeling that you would have if you were to read the chapter that we are reading today, which is Nehemiah chapter 11, okay? So this is a chapter where there are so many names to the point that maybe when you're going through your scriptures or you're going through your time of devotions and you find yourself going through a chapter of a long list of names, you are super tempted to just skip right over it, right? Because you're wondering what is so important about a recorded list of names. There was one time I was very young, I was going through... Uh, I think it was the Old Testament. I was going through the Old Testament. There were lists upon lists upon lists. And I found myself praying, Lord, maybe you would be okay, right, if I skip over this chapter. Because I don't know what I will learn from this list of names, which I feel is not relevant to my own daily life. Now, hear me out, Paul. Okay, hear me out. Before you space out today, and think that today's message will be about a list of unimportant names to the point that the things that we're going to talk about will have completely no relevance to our lives today, I want to challenge us to lean in. We know this principle both to be true in life. The things in our lives that are seemingly insignificant, the things in our lives that are seemingly trivial, and the things in our lives that are seemingly unexciting oftentimes prove to be that which is most crucial that which is most important, and that which is most necessary. And so the reason why we tend to ignore chapters like this is because they are, they are lists of names of ordinary people with ordinary jobs and ordinary lives, just like you and I. Ordinary people. Now, brick by brick, we believe that God is at work in our world today. He's building the church not the physical building, but the people, the body of Christ. He is building his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And oftentimes, if you ever came to a point in your journey where you were curious about God's work in the world, it often involves him working through ordinary people just like you and I. And his intention for our redemption is that through our lives, his love, his grace and his glory might be revealed through you. That it might be revealed through your story. That it might be revealed through your gifts, your talents, your abilities. Whatever narrative that God is weaving in your life today. To be able to wrestle or even accept that possibility or that truth that God has a purpose for you. And that he wants to use you. He wants to work through you because he has something planned for you. 
Now in Nehemiah chapter 9 and 10, so again, if you have not been able to follow along in our messages, and this is your first time here, we're so glad that you are able to be part of our Sunday worship experience on our website, on our YouTube channels. These messages do build on each other because we've been talking about the story of a man, his name is Nehemiah. And this man essentially was called out of the comfort of this very comfortable job in the city of Susa. He was called back to the city of Jerusalem, his homeland, because the walls of Jerusalem were in ruins. And so fast track, the walls have been rebuilt in Nehemiah chapter 9 and 10. Pastor Edwin talked about this, right? He said, in order for us to set things right, we must first and foremost be right with God. That the most important thing of, about our lives is first and foremost our relationship with God and everything that we are, everything that we say, everything that we do essentially, essentially flows from our relationship with God. And so the people of Israel, they recognized their sin. They recognized the wrongdoing. They repented. And essentially, they found themselves recommitting to walking in the ways of God once again. So the temple is constructed, reconstructed. The physical walls have been rebuilt. And now we come to chapter 11, where we see God records an essential aspect of the fulfillment of vision. Now, it is the month of March. We are approaching April. Ang bilis po ng oras, di ba? No, seriously, time has gone by so, so quickly. I know at the beginning of the year, we talked about our goals. We talked about our emotional goals, our mental goals, our physical goals, and our spiritual goals. For us at the very top of the year to say, what is first, th first things first, God? What is the priority of my life this year? What is that, that God-given uh, God vision that, he, that God has placed in your heart? Prayerfully, that is something that we are still carrying with it, within, within us up until this moment. Now we see an essential aspect of the fulfillment of vision. Because for decades, Jerusalem was a ghost town. Wala hong tao. Okay? For decades, ruins, there was rubble everywhere. And now, for the city to be restored as a city, it needs people. For a city to be a city, it needs people. Now, Nehemiah chapter 11, verse 1, it says this, The leaders of the people, they settled in Jerusalem. The rest of the people cast lots to bring one out of every ten of them to live in Jerusalem, the holy city, while the remaining nine were to stay in their own towns. The people commended all who volunteered to live in Jerusalem. Now, if you are a parent, if you are a leader of a company, a team, a group of people, you understand that if you want to set a kind of culture or direction for the group of people that you are leading, we see it here that from the very, from the very get-go, the leaders went first. The leaders, they went first. Now, it's, lo it's normal for leaders to live in the city because capital cities of nations, of countries, of empires, the capital city is oftentimes where the decisions by the leaders are made. But beyond this, it was more important that they lead by going first. Because again, alam po natin to, although it is easier for us to give an example that it is to live out an example, what people remember more is the example, right? Not the explanation. There is a place for an explanation, but what is seared in your mind, what makes you feel certain emotions, what, when you see someone living out their life's convictions, beliefs, and values, it's so powerful, Right? That's why I remember Pastor Josh, he would always say that oftentimes the greatest testimony of Christianity and what we believe in is a life that is changed. And that's why there is a place for explanation, but oftentimes what is seared in the hearts and minds of people is not the words that you're saying, but the life you live. And yes, it is so much easier for us to give an example and it is for us to live out 
uh, or sorry, to give an example that it is for us to live out an, oh, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Let's try this again. It is easier for us to give an explanation than it is to live out an example, but what people remember more is your example. That's why John Maxwell, he said this, a leader knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way, okay? But oftentimes, our problem is this. We know the way, we show the way, but we don't go the way. Mm, oh, we got some nodding in the room. Ooh, got some uh in the room. <laughs> like, uh, you you going after us this early. It's not even that early. It's already 10.30 a.m. <laughs> our problem as leaders, or even just as people who are living their lives wanting to make an impact for the kingdom of God, wanting our lives to speak. Our problem times is often, I know the way on a mental, intellectual level, I can show you the way. But the real test is, are you willing to go the way? If the leaders of the city of Jerusalem wanted to encourage people to live in the city again, an explanation was not enough. So John Maxwell, in his book, Leader Shift, he talks about what he calls the cost shift. The shift from the perks of leadership to the price of leadership. If you were to be asked this question, why do you want to lead, some people will answer or give answers like this. I like it when people do what I say. Yes. <laughs> I like it when I'm the one in control. Or I enjoy the recognition, I enjoy the fame, or I enjoy the praise. So John Maxwell says, all of these things talk about the perks of leadership. But in this moment, Pinnacle Village, if the attitude and the desire of our, of our hearts is to be like Jesus... Not to be served, but to serve. Then we must make that shift from the perks to the price of leadership. The perks of influence to the price of influence. If the desire of our hearts is to serve people, is to create an environment here as a church, as Pinnacle Village, where people can experience the love of God, can encounter Him, can meet Him, can experience community and love and grace, then that shift will come with a price. Because leaders are the first to climb the hill. We must be willing to pay the price of example if we want others to follow our lead. That is why we admire war generals who are leading their armies from the front, who fight from the front, and not just those who are somehow just giving and barking orders from the back, right? So the imagery, the first, the first movie scene that came to mind was Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. Do you remember? No? It's been so long. <laughs> They're making a new series, I think, um, coming soon. So one of the most... I guess memorable scenes for me in Lord of the Rings is that time where Aragorn is giving this spiel, this entire speech, because his army was about to march against the, the, the enemy, if you remember. And so allow me to read this speech for you, Paul, okay? So this is Aragorn. He says this, Hold your ground, hold your ground, sons of Gondor, of Rohan, my brothers. I see in your eyes the same fear that would take the heart of me. A day may come when the courage of men fails, when we forsake our friends and break all bonds of fellowship. But it is not this day, an hour of wolves and shattered shields, when the age of men come crashing down. But it is not this day, because this day you fight and I get to sit in the back enjoying all of you guys in front in the battlefield. No, it says, this day, we fight. It was as if Aragorn was saying, Kasama ako dyan. I'm with you in the battlefield. I'm with you in the trenches. I'm with you on the front line. This day, we fight. By all that you hold dear on this good earth, I bid you stand, men of the West. 
Why do speeches like that inspire us? It's because of this. When leaders go first, they open up a path for others to follow. When leaders go first, they open up a path for others to follow. Now, some of us are probably thinking, but Pastor Amber, this doesn't apply to me because I don't see myself as a leader. I don't see myself as an Aragorn in the Lord of the Rings. Okay? I would like to challenge that mindset today. Because if you hold the influence to change the culture around you, or you have the influence to change or shape even the lives that have been entrusted to you, then you are a leader. So if you lead your household, if you're leading a team, if you're leading a group of people, then let's be a go-first leader. Because here you see, in the process of repopulating the city of Jerusalem, the leaders went first. Now you would think, Jerusalem is done, people should be fighting over living inside the walls of the city. But in verse 1 and 2, you see there was a casting of lots, meaning they had to decide on people who had to move. Why? Alam po natin to. One of the most stressful experiences in life is moving. Whether you're moving from one geographical place to another, one career to another, it is one of the most stressful experiences emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically. Now, to move to Jerusalem was difficult for many reasons. Number one, if you move to Jerusalem, this meant giving up land and starting anew. If you lived outside the walls of Jerusalem, they had already developed a pattern of life. They plowed, they planted, they harvested their crops. And to uproot their families meant giving up a certain financial stability because there was not much economic opportunities inside the walls. And we know that experience. If you're used to a way of living, right, it's hard to change. Nasanay na tayo eh. But to uproot your entire family, to move from country to city was not easy. Number two, Moving to Jerusalem meant living behind, leaving behind family and friends. Because what's oftentimes most difficult for us in a time of transition is not that you're living behind a physical place, as it is more of people. That relational transition. And lastly, moving to Jerusalem meant enduring the problems of the city. Because transitioning into a new place did not necessarily mean no problems, but rather new ones. While you and I po are alive on this side of eternity, magkakaraon po tayo ng problema, always. We will always have a new set of problems. And maybe that's why people hesitated. Because they had to cast lots. Casting lots is very similar po to the experience of rolling dice. Okay, rolling dice. They had to cast lots to get at least one-tenth of the people to move, in, to move back into the city. Now, giving up, leaving behind, enduring. It made sense that those who volunteered to move willingly were praised and commended. Now, some say, po, there were actually two groups of people. The group chosen by Lot and the group who volunteered. Others say that these two groups were actually one and the same. That there was a casting of lots, but they had no choice, or rather, there was a casting of lots, but they actually had a choice whether or not to accept or decline. Either way, the point is this. There were people who volunteered, and there were people who went first. That's why the word volunteer, if you study its etymology, comes from the Latin word voluntarius, which, which means willing or of one's free will, uh, free will. In Hebrew, it means to impel, to stir up from within. I remember Craig Groeschel, he was saying, in the moments that we find ourselves so tired and burned out and at the end of our rope, oftentimes what is needed is not external motivation, it's not even internal motivation, because even our own willpower will fail us. At the end of the day, 
It's not an external motivation or internal motivation, but an eternal motivation, something so much deeper and beyond you. And that's why if you look at the leaders, you see the leaders and those who volunteered left the comfort of their homes to serve the Lord in a broken down city that they understood needed not only to be rebuilt physically, but restored spiritually. You know, Pinnacle Village, if there's one thing that this pandemic has taught us, it's this. We can have a lot to live on, but still, still seek desperately for something to live for. There is a world of difference, Village, between having something securely, this is what I'm living on, but at the end of the day, you and I know that that's not enough. Because the human heart, we were wired to seek desperately something to live for. And maybe for the families who were living outside of Jerusalem, life was comfortable. Life was good. There was plenty of economic opportunities outside the walls of Jerusalem. But I think there comes a point in our journey where we make that shift and we, and we realize it's not enough for me and my family to just have something to live on and not something to live for. And that's why you see this willingness of the leaders and those who went first, those who volunteered to go where God wanted them to live in order to serve the purposes of God. Nehemiah 10, verse 39, this, this statement was not just words, but it was a commitment and a lifestyle of the people. They said, we will not neglect the house of our God. Grab your no. We will not neglect the house of our God. I hope well, that this could be our prayer and commitment at this moment. Because in order for the purposes of God to come to fruition, he calls and invites us, his people, to give of ourselves willingly. People who will say, I see a lot of things about our world that needs to be changed. Why don't you change it? No. God is looking for people who are, who, who are willing to say, me, I'll go first. No need for a casting of lots. I will go first. Diana Stone is an author, and she wrote about Nehemiah chapter 11, and this is what she said. My heart is struck by how often in my life I am that Israelite who is unwilling to live in God's city. And maybe there are a lot of us who are like that today, where you know God is inviting you to take that next step. Here at Pinnacle Village, we believe so much in forward movement where if we want to be serious in our relationship with God, there is no pursuit in wanting to get closer to God that does not also involve our pursuit of connecting deeper with people, with community. That if we want to be the hands and feet of God, that it will, it will involve a response. And maybe for a lot of us here today, if you're honest with yourself, you're saying, that's me. I'm like that Israelite living outside the walls of Jerusalem, and I can sense there's this resistance and unwillingness in my heart. It's, it's a stubbornness that I can't explain. There's this hardness of my heart. I know God is saying, come, serve, be a part of what I am doing in this world, be a part of what I'm doing in your local church, but there's a stubbornness and unwillingness. And maybe there are a lot of us today, that's you. My heart is struck by how often in my life I am that, I am that Israelite, unwilling to live in God's city because I'd rather be outside because I'm okay. I have something to live on. But what if God in this moment is saying, Anak, let me invite you to something where you can say, this is what I'm living for. I'd rather be outside the walls, no burdens of how to act, no expectations to sacrifice comfort. 
Yet what God wants from us isn't a begrudging acceptance of lot casting. He wants our hearts. He wants our ability to look at the unknown and often terrifying and still say, yes, Lord, not my will, but yours. That word, yes, is a dangerous word. It's a word where it's a word that requires a lot of courage and faith because not many people are willing to discover what's on the other side of their discomfort. And we know that. We know our, our growth in our relationship with God is on the other side of our discomfort. We know our deepening in our relationship with the people around us is on the other, sky, other side of that uncomfortable conversation. We know that our desire to, this, to, just, to not just live on something, but to live for something is on the other side of discomfort. But this is the truth, village. Not everyone is willing to see what's on the other side of my discomfort. And that's why that prayer is so scary for many of us. To say, yes, Lord, not my will, but yours. We can be lot casters. We can enter into his holy city kicking and screaming, pouting for years and wondering, why me? But we can also choose to go willingly, to be the volunteers that love the Lord so much that we'd sacrifice the earthly good life for the glory of God. Lord, make our lives a willing living sacrifice for your greater purpose. The leaders of, Israel, of the Israelites and those who volunteered were willing to find out what was on the other side of the discomfort. Are we? Are you? There are many stories of people who were called by God, Abraham, Jacob, Moses, Samuel, to name a few. And their response has been recorded for all of history to remember. Isaiah chapter 6, Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to, this, to these people? Who will go for us? And so I said, Here am I, send me. And so the first question, or rather the only question that I'd like to ask us is this. Are we willing to say those three words? Here I am. This next portion is this portion where you will be very tempted to space out. Okay, Stay with me, Paul. <laughs> Look at the person beside you. Pinch them. I always say this for some reason. But if you don't know them, please don't pinch them. <laughs> Introduce yourselves and then pinch them. <laughs> Just kidding. No violence. But <laughs> this is the portion of the chapter where we will be most tempted to be like, okay, this is not important. But again, as I mentioned, oftentimes in life, the things that are seemingly most unexciting are actually the most crucial and significant. Because Jerusalem and the Israelites, Nehemiah, had a vision. And every vision needs a team. One more time. Every vision needs a team. Darius Daniels, he said this, whether we realize it or not, our relationships are purpose partners. I love that. Can you tell the person beside you, hi, purpose partner? No, tell them, hi, purpose partner. Purpose partner. Some of you just looked at the other person because you don't see them as a purpose partner. No. <laughs> hi, purpose partner. Okay. Now it says this our purpose requires people. And look at this. We never go just as far as our dream. We go as far as our team. Oof. <laughs> yes. 
Amen. <laughs> we never go just as far as our dream because you could be someone that has this crazy idea of what the world could be and should be and ought to be. And that's great because that's God's starting point. You are the leader of your family and you are saying, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But eventually, you need a team. Because we never go as far as our dream, we will only go as far as our team. Every vision needs a team, and wow, did Jerusalem have a team. They had a team. We do not remember them individually, but rather as a team of willing unknowns. This is the title of today's message is from Charles Swindle. It's a powerful way of communicating a group of people who says it's not about, again, in sports, right? It's not about the name in the back, but the name in the front. Next. Next. It's about, I have to be careful here. I am in late Los Angeles. <laughs> it's not about Lakers. I mean, it's not about LeBron James, right? It is about the Lakers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is not, it's not about <laughs> It's not about Steph Curry but Golden State, right? The Warriors. Boo, I said Mary is listening right now. <laughs> oh no, buti na lang Mary, you're not you're not here physically with us because they are booing here. <laughs> I remember when I used to compete, when I used to compete in Taekwondo, one of my proudest moments when I step on that mat is when I wear my jacket. Because our jacket sticks out like a sore thumb. It's red, it's bright red. <laughs> on our dobok, that's what we, in, in Taekwondo, it's that uniform that we wear. It says more than medals here on the, on the butt. Okay. But I remember the first time that I competed on an international level, it's not even about MTM anymore, it's about the United States of America. And I realized stepping on that stage for the first time, it's a different feeling. Because at the end of the day, you don't represent your family name, you don't even represent your local gym, you represent your country. And to just be one out of that entire group, I can't explain the feeling, but to know that when you step out on that stage, it's not Amber Rodriguez on the dobok, it's the United States of America. It's your life that is hidden behind that bigger banner. And so if you look, okay, you look at this, this team of willing unknowns, it was a group of people who labored away from the spotlight, from the limelight. You have a few names in Nehemiah 11, but not all of their names were listed. Because the most important thing for them was not the name in the back, but the name on the front. And that's why you have administrators, Nehemiah 11. Their chief officer was Joel, son of Zikri, who assisted who was assisted by Judah, son of Hasenua, second in command over the city. In every team, you need people who are organized, people who take chaos and make it orderly. So you had the administrators, you had priests from the priests and their associates who carried on the work for the temple, 822 men, hundreds of people who willingly and faithfully supported the work inside the temple. Again, the team of willing unknowns. The Levites, who had charge of the outside work of the house of God. So these were the people who dedicated their skills not only in caring for the building, but at that time, the phrase outside work also referred to people who handled civil affairs outside of the temple. You had prayer warriors, Mathaneah, son of Mika, the son of Zabdi, the son of Asaph, the director who led in thanksgiving and prayer. He was the prayer leader. 
right? Prayer is something that is so important to us as a village. Yesterday, we had our Glocal Anchored. It was the launching of our Solergy, which is a 20 days prayer preparing us for our summit, where for 30 minutes every day for the next 20 days starting tomorrow, we will pray together as a village. If you were not able to attend Anchored, our preachings and our messages will be uploaded on our website. We encourage you. Watch those messages to see what Solergy is about. Then join us. Be part. Because here you see in the team of the, the team of willing unknowns, I love how Matanaya had a special shout out, right? The prayer ministry. He was the prayer leader. We had musicians. Uzi, one of Asaph's descendants, who were the musicians responsible for the service of the house of God. So whether you had praise and worship leaders, prayer warriors, administrators, people who were making sure that the temple grounds were, were okay. I hope that after le- reading today's message and going through today's topic, when you come across another list in the Bible... If there's one thing I hope happens today and changes today, it's this, that our perspectives on lists will never be the same. That what is seemingly an insignificant, unexciting, seemingly irrelevant list of names is a reminder of two things. That it will take a team, not just a dream. It starts with a dream, but we will only go as far as our team. It will take a team of willing unknowns to turn a vision into reality. Colossians 3, verse 23, where it says, Work willingly at whatever you do. Again, willingness to say, yes, Lord, to say, here I am. This time, no longer what's in it for me. This time, no longer what, Lord, can you promise me that I'll have something to live on? No. Next step, this time, how can I contribute? How can I serve? How can I live for something this time? The willingness to say, yes, here I am. Lord, give me the courage to go first. It takes a team of willing unknowns to turn a vision into reality. Verse 23, to work willingly at whatever you do as though you are working for the Lord and not for people. Beyond the perks, the price of influence. Because the desires of our hearts is to serve and not to, not to be served. And so at the end of the day, Lord, not for the praise or the approval of man, but through you, to you, through you, for you. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is Christ. And number two, it's like a, not a paradox, but two things that exist, the two truths that exist at the same time. That God moves through a team of willing unknowns but the truth that God also cares about every individual and remembers their service to him. Hebrews 6, verse 10, God is not unjust, he will not forget. Charles Wendell said that. Unknown, but not forgotten. Our God is a just God. He will not forget your work, He will not forget your love, the love that you've shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Earlier, I mentioned that our God is at work today, and oftentimes our challenge is how can we partner with God so that we might be able to participate what he's already doing in our midst? And perhaps... There are so many of us that for the longest time, our default mindset is, what's in it for me? What can I get out of this? 
Pinnacle Village, today we'd like to challenge us to ask a different set of questions. Because you get to choose every day of your lives. Is it enough that you have something to live on? Or will you pursue and seek the call and invitation of God? Because we were meant, we were meant to live for something bigger. Gabe Lyons, he talks about redemption and how redemption is not the end of our story. He says, Christ's death and resurrection were not only meant to save people from something. He wanted to save us, Christians, to something. They recognize that Christ's redemptive work is not the end or even the goal of our stories and that redemption is the beginning of our participation in God's work of restoration in our lives and in the world. Understanding that one idea literally changes everything. We've heard our pastor say that, that redemption is not the end but the beginning that we are not just saved for, from, but to something. And that something is to be able to participate in what God is already doing in our midst. His restoration project for you and I and for the rest of the world. Now in this project or in this pursuit, each and every single one of us, we have a role to play. All of us that are listening in this moment, you do have a role and a place in all of this. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 4, God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. God's various ministries, they're carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere, but God himself is behind it all. Now look at this. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Our gifts, our talents, the uniqueness of our personality, all of those things is a manifestation of who God is through you and through people. And that's why I want us to wrestle, mull over, and think, ask a different set of questions today, Pinnacle Village. Because if we will only go as far, not as our dream, but as far as our team, then every single one of us has been given that call and invitation to be a part of what, it, what God is doing in our midst. And that's why at Pinnacle Village Po, that's something that's very important for us. And we'd like to invite you to partner with us because our dream is to create an environment where people can experience the love and grace and hope of God together. A community where we can say we're growing in faith and love together. How many of us, Bo, you can say that Pinnacle Village has played an important role in your growth? Yes? Thumbs up? Nodding? Yes? No? Maybe? You're not sure. <laughs> I remember one author would say, God uses people to shape people. And oftentimes, our greatest and most powerful experiences of the love of God is when we experience that love from people. And so we want to be able to create this environment. We know that it is the spirit that moves in the hearts of people, but we also believe that we can and have that opportunity to create the spiritual environment where people can connect with God. So we don't do this often um, every Sunday, but I, I want us to take a moment to look around. So if, uh, wherever you are, on site, okay? I know for those of us online, bear with, bear with us. But look around, look around. Hey, look around. East Coast, if you're on site, San Francisco, Bay Area, look around, okay? Yeah, look around, look around, look around. Every single week, 
Our lead pastor, Pastor Gina, calls it our unsung heroes. My, one of my favorite phrases when I often refer to the team of, will, un, of willing unknowns is those who choose to labor in love. Our labor, when we think of work, sometimes the mindset that we have is strenuous, it's hard, it's difficult, which is true. But oftentimes the balance that the Lord gives to me is this is a labor of love. And so every week we have a team of willing unknowns. You don't see them speak on the stage. They're not just the faces that you see here during praise and worship, but they are the people who work behind the scenes. And if not for their labor of love, we would not be able to create this experience for us. For those who prepare the physical temple, to those who feed us, yeah, di ba? Awesome, the people every week <laughs> who rally together so that we can enjoy food together after service. Our tech team, those behind the cameras. There's just so many. The team of, un of willing unknowns who are courageous enough every single day to say, yes, here I am. That we might be able to create an environment where everything that we say and do points to God. And so we want to encourage you to, do, to, to partner with us because there is a saying, no one can do everything, but everyone can do something. Now we've been talking about the next step quite a lot during our announcements, but today I'd like to personally zero in on that because the kind of commitment that we make in partnering up with the church as we strive and dream to serve with the community, indeed it has an eternal impact. Allow me to read to you a story that I came across of one person who was assigned to be a greeter or usher. So the story goes this way. Our service started at 10 a.m., but this man, his name is Mike, was always outside ready to greet by 10.30 a.m., even if no one had arrived. I told Mike he did not have to be in his usher role that early, but he said, no, I must be here early. I was serving in this spot. So this is Mike talking. Sabinya, I was serving in this spot when the man by the name of Hank arrived a few months ago, and we started a great conversation, he began to feel okay about coming, and the rest is history. Eventually, Hank started to become serious in his relationship with God and accepted him as a savior. Mike paused for a moment. The intensity in his expression was so strong. So, if coming here and opening the door welcoming people and allowing them to feel comfortable that this is a space for you to explore faith and to grow in your relationship with God. Then getting here a few min minutes early, if, if I know that coming here a few minutes early can potentially make a difference in someone's eternity, then I think it is a small price to pay. So, for today, as we end, um, you received forms for us on site, and we'd like to encourage you to take that next step. If you are online, it's on our website, pinnaclevillage.org, under the Volunteers tab. The pandemic has broken down physical walls and boundaries because you can now serve on a team from wherever you are. Now, if you are on site, so on site, can I ask you to look towards the back? In Epic Cup, these are our ushers. Can you say hi? Can you wave to our ushers? These are our ushers and our greeters. Also in Samutsari area, can you also greet, uh, can you also wave to them? They're wearing the Pinnacle Village shirts. If you have any questions or concerns about how you can serve with one of our teams, then you can approach them anytime today and drop off either in the box in the back or personally to one of our ushers 
or our greeters. Now, as we end, po, as we end, our greatest ability is often our availability. That's why it has never been about our ability to perform perfectly as it has been about our availability to serve willingly. There is a song po, that I'd like for us to sing together because today is all about responding to the call and the invite of God with, yes, Lord, here I am. Yes, Lord, here we are. The title po, of this song is available. And the singer po, talks about the story of the song this way. She said, available is one of those songs that you can't just sing with your lips and not embrace with your heart. It's a song that causes you to be in a posture of saying yes to God. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse, verse 4 says, Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. Because it is as simple as that. God calls and we respond. I have found that there is nothing more beautiful, nothing more fulfilling than saying yes to God. There is no higher calling than being available to whatever God has for you. And so we pray that as you hear the voice of the Lord calling, calling to you, you find the joy in responding, here I am. All God wants from us is our willingness. He's not waiting for us to impress him. He simply wants our yes. And that's why in Judges chapter 5, verse 2, it says, When the people willingly offer themselves, praise the Lord. Again, when the people willingly offer themselves, praise the Lord. May I invite everyone to please stand, and we will sing this song together as our band leads us.
that realm of worship and prayer as we come before God. Let's just close our eyes and bow down our heads. In this moment, can you utter those three words? A simple, here I am. Maybe for some of us, this is your first time. And for some, this is a prayer that God has been challenging you to say over and over and over and over and over again. Can you utter those three words before God? Lord, here I am. Here we are. Lord, I want to live my life for the purposes of your kingdom, and I don't really know where to start. All I know is you're calling me, you're reaching out to me, you're inviting me, and I'm afraid I can feel this hesitation inside. But Father, this time, by your grace, I will utter those words before you. Lord, here I am. Father, we come before you, O Lord, humbled. To be reminded that it takes a team of willing unknowns who live for the audience of one. Who work and live their lives willingly, not for the praise of others, but for your approval alone. Lord, we ask that you forgive us for the moments where we leave that realm. That you, for, that you forgive us, oh God, for the moments where we were chasing after recognition and fame. We were chasing after the approval of the people around us. But first and foremost, we already stand worthy and approved before you. 
through Jesus, through the cross, through what he has done. Because of that, we can, there's something for us to live for. And Father, today, though it just be a one step, we dare to take that step. Father, we thank you because we know that one of the ways that your glory and your power is expressed and made manifest is through the church. And Father, for the many moments and times that we have been on the receiving end, that through the people of this community you've allowed us to grow and to move forward, we want to thank you. But this time, This time we want to pray a little differently. That instead of asking something from you, this time we ask, gamitin niyo po kami. Ang buhay po namin. Our talents, our skills, our abilities. That we might be like Jesus who came not to be served, but to serve. And Father, we thank you so much for your patience. And we thank you, God, for the courage that you give to each and every one of us to say yes, to say yes to you and your will, not just in this moment, but every day for the rest of our lives. We thank you, God, for Pinnacle Village. We thank you for our unsung heroes, our team of willing unknowns. who labor in love away from the limelight, but Father, who continue to give their all for the purposes of your kingdom. We thank you, O oh God, for the entire series, Brick by Brick. We thank you, O oh God, for moments like this where we can recommit our lives once, once again to you. We thank you, O oh God, for our time together we leave and lift up to you our tithes and love offerings as we give them to you with grateful hearts. Maraming salamat po at samahan niyo po kami even as we continue the rest of our day. And once again, we just want to say, mahal na mahal po namin kayo. All glory, all honor, and all praises belong to you and to you alone. We give you our lives, we give you our thanks, we give you our praise. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 